Hi there, my name is Emily DeVizio. Thank you for joining me today for this Math Dive in 5 in second grade focused on arrays. As with any of our Math and Dive in 5s, you know that we have a task for you to do first. We ask that after we go through the task, you pause this video and complete the task with your uh, partner or if you're planning by yourself, that is fine too. Um, for this particular task, I want you to pretend that a dog bit off the missing corner of our array here. I want you to go ahead and solve the problem and think about how many dots were originally on the card, given that it was a complete array. And as you're doing that, I want you to have discussions or think about what a student would need to know and be able to understand in order to complete this task. See you soon. Welcome back. I hope that you found that task interesting. Uh, we will talk a little bit more about that later. But as you can see here, uh, with our best standards, we can see that the students have focused on some of the concepts that will support them with the second grade content. They have worked with addition and subtraction and determining and explaining equations. In second grade now, they will use the rectangular arrays to work with repeated addition. The students will explore this concept by using counters, square tiles, and other concrete models, but more importantly, making the connection between the concrete model to the pictorial representation on grid paper. Students will also explore the commutative property of addition. They have already done a little bit with that in first grade, where they can either add the rows or the columns to find the total amount within an array. They can express this array that they've created using equations, as well as um, it's important to note it that the students working with the arrays in second, they are only composed up to five rows and up to five columns. This is a building block that is working towards the multiplication that you will see on the screen they will experience in third grade. In thinking about the first task we did, in order to support students with their understanding of a task like that, they first need to understand that an array is a set of objects arranged, in, arranged into rows and columns. We know that rows display units horizontally and that columns display units vertically. So here we see that we see three color tiles in each row and there are five rows. We will see on the next slide a representation of columns but to encourage students to learn the terms row and columns, you want students to work with the concrete manipulatives to build arrays, as well as a task that they could do is sky draw using their fingers to draw horizontally and vertically to represent the direction of a row or column. From there, students can count the amount of objects arranged in each rectangular array and encourage them to describe the strategies that they used for counting, keeping track of the total amount. As with the previous slide, here we see an example with working with columns. I see that there are five color tiles in each column and there are three columns. So again, it's having those conversations with the students, connecting it to the equation or the expression that we see below, and making sure students are encouraged to describe the strategies that they use for counting. So the example we see here is a little different. Previously, the students were given the color tiles or whatever the concrete material was, and they had to count how many there were total using the rows and columns. In this particular example, they are giving the total amount of units and they have to represent each unit, making sure that each row has the same number and each column has the same number as well. So the students are gonna to have to arrange the object into a rectangular array, similar to the one you see here on the left. And then once the array is formed, students represent the total as a sum of equal add-ins. So that's a little different than what they did on the previous slide, but it's building upon their knowledge of doing what they did on the previous slide. Once our students have had ample practice, counting and forming arrays by using concrete objects, they are ready to represent arrays on grid paper. So we're making that connection between the concrete to the representational. Students here can count the square units within a rectangular array drawn on grid paper, or they can draw a rectangle around an array 
of square units. They represent the number of unit squares by using repeated addition. So here we see an example. They are asked to draw a rectangular array on grid paper to represent four columns of three. And you may stu say students represent um, the problem similar to this. So you see here that they have four columns and there are three in each column. Here are some potential misconceptions your students may have with building understanding of arrays. And if so, there is a teaching implication shared for you to use. So sometimes students may have issues with counting the total number of objects. If you see that, then use arrays with smaller numbers. Remember, our rows and columns go only up to five units. So perhaps starting smaller and then gradually increasing the total number of items in the array. You may also see that students struggle with the repeated addition within the array. If they have trouble with that, a suggested teaching implication is to give students practice with skip counting and making the connection between the skip counting and repeated addition. Another potential misconception you may see when working with arrays is students may have difficulty distinguishing between a row and a column. If you see this, I encourage you to facilitate discussions for students to make the distinction between the rows and columns, potentially using, as I referenced earlier, the sky drawing, where they're actually drawing rows horizontally and drawing the columns in the air uh, vertically. And as always, we want to ensure that when we're teaching mathematics, we're building understanding through the concrete connecting it to the representational and the abstract. What's important to note is that this is fluid and we may need to go in between each of these islands of thinking. But here is an example of concrete using the units, using the color tiles, counters, linking cubes to build understanding of the rows and columns and arrays. And then we're gonna connect that to using grids which we talked about a little bit earlier. And then ultimately, our students would be thinking about the arrays abstractly, where they know that it's skip counting or repeated addition, and they can use the um, expression or equation in their head to help them solve the problem to find the total. I'd like to thank you for joining me today, focused on arrays in second grade. I hope that you found this helpful and see you soon. Thank you.